Do you remember the story Alice in Wonderland? The book written by Lewis Carroll, movies made after it, children's movies, real life adult movies. It's a great book, but there's a quote from it that I want to share with everyone today. And it goes like this. Now picture this, Alice is in the book and she's come across a path that forks. She doesn't know which way to go, but just so happens there's a cat there. So she says, Alice says, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? And the Cheshire Cat says, well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. And Alice replies, well, I don't much care where. So the Cheshire Cat says, then it doesn't matter much which way you go. And so a lot of people that I interact with are faced with this very situation and they have the same attitude as Alice. They don't really know which way they want to go. They don't care which way they want to go. And they ask me, the cat, where should I be going? What should I be doing? And I answer usually, doesn't really matter, does it? Which surprises people because retirement has a lot of different paths to choose from. You got to decide which one you're going to take. I can't tell you. And you might already be retired. Which path are you on? Do you know? And does it matter? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Tony Shore's with us. Here he is, Tony. I don't know if you like the blast from the past. I love, that. Written, I love that story. Alice when you in Wonderland. were a young child, I think. I love it. Oh, yeah. 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 No, my mom read that story to me. I remember the story of Alice in Wonderland and the, the Disney version. Yeah, so. and I took that quote um, when I when I first got out of college, not, not my first job, but my... When I moved to Minnesota, actually, by you, and I started a company with a friend of mine, and we provided education technology consulting to schools, kindergarten through 12th grade. And what we found was a lot of the schools, this was during the, you know, right before the dot-com bubble burst, but before that, there was a lot of purchasing of technology. And yes. schools were buying technology. And why were they buying technology? Because that's what everyone was doing. Right. So they bought this technology. And the question we had was, well, what's the purpose of it? What What are you trying to accomplish? And it was, well, we don't know. We'll kind of figure it out. It's a good tool. And so they, they went through the motions of, of doing something, but they didn't really have a purpose or goal. And so it was wasteful in yeah. a lot of ways. And so I see that with retirement a lot. And so we did a show. I'll put it up here for those that um, missed it. It was months ago, maybe even a year. I don't remember. It was called The Four Phases of Retirement. And we talked about the, um, I saw a TED Talk on it, and there's a book written about it by a guy, I forget his name, but he went through the four phases. The first phase is the vacation phase, where you kind of like, hey, I'm free. Yeah. Then it's the feeling lost phase. Yeah, feeling, I kind of feel, what am I doing? Then it's the trial and error phase, where you try different things out, and then you finally get to the last phase, reinvent and rewire, and then you have... The purpose, and I think the whole point of that, those four phases was to acknowledge that for most retirees, they go through this, some quicker than others, but a lot of people get stuck on the feeling loss phase. Yeah. Because the vacation phase is nice, but eventually- You burn you out after a while. You can, you can only uh, lay on the beach or on your couch watching t binging TV or go golfing so many times. You've, you've talked about it before. People hit a wall, right? For they some people, it's six months. And then they're like, oh, uh, some people, it's a year. Uh, it, can, it can vary. Some people can make it two years, but they eventually hit a wall and like, well, okay, now what? Right? Is what exactly. you're saying. Exactly. And I've, I've, over the last few months, I've interacted with three particular people um, and I want to share that story with you that were in that feeling loss phase. They just didn't know it. Um, but before I get to that, um, I want to kind of relate it to a different time in life. Cause if you think about it, people retire usually just once, hopefully just once. Yeah. So they don't really have experience with this, but if you think about it, you do have some experience if you want to think about the college experience. Now, my oldest is looking mm. at colleges and I asked him the other day, Oh, I wish you the best. Where, where, where do you want to, what do you want to do? Where do you think you want to go? And what do you think the 16 year old's response was to what do you think you want to do? Where do you want to go? What do you think it was? I don't know. I just want to go to college and f I'll figure it out. <laughs> That's it. 
Yeah. That's They're it. going to college for the experience of, I want to experience college. I want to live in a dorm and hang out. Right. Right. So there's no, it's kind of like the vacation phase of retirement. Like I just want to go and, yeah. and not have mom and dad telling me anything. Um, and, but that's an expensive decision. Right. Oh, <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. And so, but again, now we fast forward to retirement and it's that same decision. What do you want to do? And it's like, I just want to, I just want to stop working. Right. And you do fine. But now what? Yeah. What's your major? What, yeah. Most major people are clueless uh, when they enter college. And a lot of people are clueless when they enter retirement because they have no idea. They just think, oh, no, I don't have to work. How and they didn't do the planning and preparation. They don't have a Dan Wendell, uh, a retirement planner helping them. But maybe I can't help with this. I want to get to that in a minute, but I wanted to talk to you about, you know, you have two in college now, right? Yes, I have two in college and one about, uh, I have a senior in high school who's uh, applying to colleges and for uh, grants and student loans right now. And so all three are really involved in the process. What was that experience like for them, Do you, from your perspective, picking where they were going to go and what they were going to major in? Well, uh, my fir my oldest, my son, Adam, uh, is unique, and I'm very fortunate. I wish all three had been this way, but he knew specifically what he wanted to go to school for. He had a career at go in mind, and so he picked a college based on that career, and he, got he wanted to be a physician's assistant. And so he looked at all the PA programs in school and uh, found a college that was low price, but had a really good pre-PA program specifically for that. And so then, I would classify him as the retiree that knows what they have. They're going to yep. go somewhere. They know what clubs they're going to join. They yep. know what their purpose is in retirement. So they go through they that have goals real quick. and they're set and they have purposes. And it's not just to binge watch, read a lot of books or do a lot of golf. Mm -hmm. Those okay. don't count. So yeah. you, that, that's, that you can only go downhill from there. So your first son. Yep. Yep. <laughs> We're going downhill from there. Yeah. That was, that was a uh, number one son. I have two daughters uh, who have uh, still have no idea. No idea. So they're on the vacation phase or well, your, your second daughter or your second child, your daughter, oldest daughter, she's in college now. Is she in she vacation is. phase or is she feeling lost yet? Has she been like, oh, they're asking uh, no, me questions she hit that the, I can answer. The, the first year she was in vacation stage and she got a full ride scholarship. She's very sharp. And it Ooh. was in business and everybody kept telling her, you know, she likes to, she's very, um, uh, driven and uh, is a good way to put it. And uh, she likes to take charge of be in charge of situations. So she's at business. But then she realized after the first year how broad and vague that was. And she's really driven. So she hit a wall after the first year, second year. She's like, I'm going to switch majors. Mm, you know switching I mean? majors. Yes. Yeah. The so old she's in the trial and error phase, the old switching majors. So, and then the, our youngest literally doesn't, she wants to go to a college where they have dorms and she wants <laughs> to go to a four year school. That's I want to live away from mom and dad. I want a four year college. I don't want, I don't want a Votek. We're trying, we were trying to encourage her to go into a, you know, a trade school or yeah, a specific yeah. trade. And uh, she goes, I want to experience dorm life. <laughs> that's okay. what she's worried about. Okay. So that's not, that's, uh, that's so she's still the, in the vacation phase. Yeah. That's the clueless movie right there. Um, mm -hmm. But she hasn't gone to college yet. She's trying to pick, but uh, fortunately uh, my wife and my, really my other two kids have also worked in the healthcare field. So uh, my wife's encourager, for nursing, different types of nursing. So she's mm -hmm. going to, there's a demand for that. So now she's looking for schools with good nursing programs and applying. So that's kind of where we're at, but if she's really uh, open for influence, which is good, you know, as long as she gets the college experience, we can influence her direction, but so, we'll see sometimes when the parents pick the direction, it usually ends up. Yeah. Yes. And so you as a parent have gone through, exactly what I go through a lot of times with clients in retirement. Yeah. Okay. So they come to me and say, do I have enough to retire or how much do I need? And it's like, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Well, I don't really much know what I want to accomplish. And then I say, well, it doesn't matter. You don't need anything to accomplish nothing. You need nothing. 
<laughs> and it's it's really bizarre it's like the to Cheshire say that. Cat quote. That's right. your Cheshire Cat, quote. right? Um, and then do you go on the whole? I noticed you quickly passed by it, but you had a phrase up earlier in today's show, and I was going to give you a hard time because there are many paths. And I'm like, oh, Jan, Dan's a universalist now. There are many <laughs> paths from which to choose. You're one of those guys, huh? Universalist. I'm kind of more of a choose your own adventure book guy than Alice in Wonderland. No. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, um, I think the key is for retirees now, and I want to tell a couple of stories, but the key is um, you have to separate pleasure from purpose. So a lot of retirees go into it and say, oh, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to golf and I'm going to read, like you said, or I'm going to just do nothing. I've had, I've had purpose at work my whole life. I just want to relax. And that works initially, but it gets old real quick. Yeah. And then you're lost. So that's the vacation phase. And relaxing and isn't a goal. That's so the problem. I've, but what I've, I've recently met a few people that have come to me and they've, and some come because they sit on a seminar and they want to talk. Some see us online. Some have friends that said, hey, go talk to Dolphin Financial Group. And so I sit with them. And the first stage of, of interacting with them is to find out what they're, what's going on. What, what, what Do I like them? Do they like me? And the only way to know that is to get them to share where they're trying to get to and whether or not sure. I can even help. And in particular, I have three that I've been thinking of that sparked me to talk about this show, uh, all single. So there's something there. Sure. Um, I think that that's a factor in all of this. Oh, it's for a sure. lot harder yeah. to have a purpose or have a motivation or if you're by yourself and don't have someone else kind of helping you along with that. Right. Sometimes it's great. Like your yeah, oldest maybe, son, yeah. he knows what he wants and he didn't need mom and dad to kind of push him. Nope. But um, if you're single, it might be a little bit more difficult to come up with a retirement purpose. But again, it could be easier because you don't have anyone else to impress, right? Or, or to, get, to get buy in with. Um, not to say that you need to have the exact same purpose as your spouse. But um, in all cases, they were single. In all cases, they had more than enough money to last them 50 years in retirement regardless of spending of course you know within reason but they had tens of millions or multi-millions of dollars all three so mm -hmm. they're coming to me with significant amounts of money saying what do i do with this and my first response which to them was surprising was well i don't know what, what do you want to do with it and they said well that's why i'm here to talk to you and we had the <laughs> i'm the cheshire cat here and i don't, I don't want to sound flippant and and like i don't care because I certainly do, and this is my job. But there's a point where I can't help, and it's, what do you? What's your purpose? What are you trying to do? And I can yeah. help. Do you want to leave the that. majority of it to your children and grandchildren? That's a. That, do you want to do that with your? Right. Uh, do you want to travel the world? Do you want to go back to work at some point? That makes a difference in what you do with the resources you have. Right? Is that what right. you're saying? And and in each instance, none of them had kids. Or a spouse. Wow. So family was just ancillary, no yeah. one depending on them. So it's just money. And they had literally millions invested. And I say, well, am I invested correctly? And I said, I don't know. And how can I not know? They're, they're showing me their investments. This is the level of risk. Am I taking too much risk or too little? And I still say, I don't know. Because what's the difference? And I often say, if your portfolio got chopped in half tomorrow because the government collapsed or something, would that change your life? And they say, uh, I'd be upset. I'm like, yeah, well, of course, no one likes to lose money, but would it change your lifestyle? No. If you doubled your money tomorrow, would it change your lifestyle? No. So what's the difference how you invest it? And that starts to get people a little uncomfortable because they're like, well, what are you saying? That you can't help me? And it's more about where I fall as a financial planner, because there's different types of financial planners. So the question, I, I do a lot of retirement income planning. Do you create a retirement income plan before you retire? Is that even possible, right? Can you do that? So, um, but if you don't know where you're going, can you create a retirement income plan? Can you pick your major before you go to college? Yeah, you can. But look what happened to your daughter. 
Yeah. She's like, no, I don't like it. You have to go through that trial and error. So people ask me, and these people are asking me, how much do I need to save for retire to retire? Well, it depends how much you want to spend. That's always the question. And for these people that don't have a direction, they don't know how much they want to spend. They're certainly not spending more than they make. All of them are living below their means. Usually, people live below their means and they're, and they're rudderless because they don't know what to spend their money on. And they're in that I could phase. personally help them with that if they need help. With exactly. that. You could always and, refer them to me. Right, I could. <laughs> I said, adopt a. I know a, what a, to spend their money on. Adopt a radio personality. And I yeah. can put you a little picture of you <laughs> suffering. You know, only for $500 a day, you can make the change the life of this. You know, but in reality, these people are in the feeling loss phase. They don't know it. They're past the vacation phase. In all instances, they've been retired for over 10 years, more. Mm. So they've been going through this feeling loss phase for years, and now they've come, that's become like their way of life, and they're miserable about it, um, and they don't realize that's where they're stuck. So they need to go to the trial and error phase. But where do you get the financial planner? At what point do you meet with me and say, hey, I need help? And I, like I said, um, you could... You could come to me and, and ask these questions. Do I have enough? Am I doing the right thing? And I'm always going to come back to, well, what are you trying to accomplish? Sure. Um, what are you your goals? If you can't answer that, then I can't answer. Right. What question. are your goals? You have to know what you're trying to achieve in order to achieve it. <laughs> right. Right. Or you could just keep going the direction you're going. And, and in all cases, these people will be fine because they have a lot of money. Right. Financially fine. But I think the point is retirement isn't about finances. It, it's a big part of it. It's about health care and all sorts of things. But even then, if you, everything's covered, if you have enough money, look at this. These, these people, everyone's like, oh, I wish I had $5 million in the bank. I would be happy. No, you wouldn't. Not if you don't have a purpose. You won't be. All the money yeah. in the world is not going to help you figure this out. You got to figure out what you want. And then, so, so it's a chicken and egg thing. But um, I do create retirement income plans for people that are rudderless. I do. We pick a lane and say, all right, here's what we could do. Let's, let's try that out. And then they come back and say, I don't like this. Or I'm not comfortable. I didn't like how that felt. Or I want to do something different. Then they come back and we create a new plan. I'm not married to the plan. But for the most part, people that have a, a vision or a purpose, we create one plan and we stick to it make minor adjustments for people like this we have to pick a lane and then create a plan and then come back and revisit it but what do you think happens tony what do you think happened to these three people and me what what do you think our relationship's like if you had to guess um i don't know i mean uh it, it depends but uh I don't know if they couldn't figure out what they wanted. You probably didn't end up working with them. Correct. These are not clients. They're, they might say, oh, this is my guy. Dan's my guy because the, the, we meet and talk. But they haven't hired me to create anything because I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting on info from them. Yeah. And that's surprising to a lot of people. Well, don't you want their business? Of course I'd want their business. Right? But I'm not going to to charge someone for something that they don't that we can't measure whether or not it's successful sure so there's the they're in limbo they're in that stage where they're lost they're feeling lost i can't pick their purpose right because it's just like you just said at the beginning do you pick the major for your child how's that gonna go <laughs> it might work out but uh, chances are it won't <laughs> right. <laughs> right right and that's an expensive mistake yeah potentially very Right. Oh, I'm going to be a lawyer. Four years of college go by law degree. And then you're like, mm, I hate law. <laughs> yeah. I want to be a doctor. It, oh, it happens. Right. It happens all the time. Yeah. And it happens in retirement. Yeah. And that's OK. And it would be more than OK for these individuals because they have enough money to make a course correction. But I'm just thinking they don't want. To get out of the feeling lost phase yet because they're afraid they're going to commit to something and not like it, but 
you got to remember the trial and error phase. That's the whole point is to try things out. Yeah. To pick a lane, try it out. If you don't like it. And if you got that kind of money and you don't know what to do with it, maybe invest in a business or start your, Oh, I've always wanted to start my own little record store, you know, and buy a sports or charity downtown or give show, it away. Or, or give it away, create an endowment or right. Yeah. Right. And I put all those options on the table to people. Do you want to invest in businesses? Do you want to give it away? Um, do you want to hire me to help you give it away? I mean, because that's an option too. I have the ability to do project based planning with people. All right. For the next year, we're going to meet five times and we're going to meet with charities. I'm going to set it up. You're going to talk to them, interview them, and then decide how much you want to give them. You know, like getting that push, right? Hiring someone to do that. And a lot of times they may not need a retirement planner. They might need a life planner. Yeah. And so, because sometimes this, you become a life coach though for your clients. Right. <laughs> right. And, but that's not my expertise. Right. I mean, it's, it's all going to be based around the finances and investing and making sure you have enough to do what you're trying to do. But right. these particular people probably need a life coach first to say, here's what you got to get your life together, figure it out, then go to a financial planner and say, here's where I'm thinking of going. How do I make it happen financially? That's when I come in. But for some people, I do a little bit of that, but that's not my specialty. So right. I wanted to point that out because this is something that I've seen a lot of. And to those people watching and saying, oh, I wish I had all this money. Again, that's not what it's about. We, we, we did a show about that study. I think it's the longest running study on personal happiness from Harvard. 80 years, I think, has been running or more. What are the people that are happiest? Is it about how much money they had? It was in Boston, I think. They started with people from um, low-income neighborhood and then the people that were wealthy, and they followed them. And it didn't matter what your social, your financial status was. If you had strong relationships and purpose, you were happier than those with all the money in the world. Yep. So when you're listening to me and you're saying, oh, I wish I had all the money. Oh, I look at that person's getting 4,000 a month from social security. I wish I was getting that. I only get 1,200. No, you don't want that. You want purpose. Yeah. And that's what I want. I think the messaging is today. I'll be the Cheshire cat. I just got to get my big smile. I wonder if I can edit the video <laughs> with that big smile going. So conclusion, Tony, retirement planning is more than finances and investing. Having a direction can help shape your finances, but your finances can also be reshaped once you have a direction. Yeah. Chicken and egg. If this is a chicken egg situation, what does that make me? The farmer, the rooster, the rooster, no, no, the roosters don't lay eggs. I know <laughs> you almost got me. You almost got, I knew you were waiting. For that. Oh, the fox, <laughs> you're the fox in the hen house. I oh, know that's, that's not you. So, what do you think, Tony? Do you, I know you're never going to retire, right? But if, if you had to. If you if you won the Powerball, if right? the golden pipes give out. If you won the Powerball, the Powerball so won't make a difference. I, I'll keep doing the show each week with you. Seriously, I, I couldn't not do these shows. You're being genuine there. We yeah. you've said that before. Yeah, you nailed it. Right, money's not going to matter if you don't have a purpose, and you enjoy talking on the radio and, yes. and sharing and yep. conversations. As long as my voice holds out. Uh, I'll be doing this. I'll be doing voiceovers and radio work as long as I can, because it's not, even if I won the Powerball, I'd still do this. I wouldn't quit. Because again, you're right. You very good. So yeah. time to start. No, the I, would, I might do, I might eventually do something with that money, but yeah, exactly. But that's yeah. not going to, so, so that's just it. A lot of people, their work defines them and they retire and now they don't have any purpose. Mm -hmm. And so they're miserable and money's not helping. Now you could use some of that money, give it away and feel good. And that's your purpose. Yeah. Ooh, right. But again, you gotta have a purpose versus pleasure because pleasure only goes so far. It's fleeting. It's yes. quick. The golf game is only going to last three hours or four. If you're bad, well, who knows? Purpose right? will carry you. Right. But who you're golfing with and, and, Doing things with, that's going to carry. Maybe why you're golfing, 
and or why you're getting up and doing something because you're going to do create some sort of purpose as opposed to pleasure that's the key that's it tony thanks for a good show i hope that um the listeners are, are are hearing you and hearing the sincerity in your voice when it says truly doesn't matter how much money you have you're still going to be doing what you like to do and that's that's important so if you don't know what you like to do start figuring that out preferably before you retire right we'll catch you next week everybody all matters discussed in today's show are for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Dan Whittle nor Dolphin Financial Group are affiliated or endorsed by any government agency. Investment advisory services are offered through Dolphin Wealth Management Inc., a registered investment advisor in the state of Florida. Insurance products and services are offered through Dolphin Insurance Inc. Dolphin Wealth Management Inc. and Dolphin Insurance Inc. are affiliated companies doing businesses as Dolphin Financial Group. You should talk to someone at Dolphin Financial Group before implementing any of these strategies or ideas.